So um, we're here at PhotoBiz. I'm Jeremy Heiler. I'm the creative director here at PhotoBiz. And today we're going to be talking to Alex Cobb, our SEO expert. And we're just going to talk to him about anything you guys want to ask him. Ask him anything, and we're just going to talk about it. So I'm going to start. How'd you get the nickname Buck? <sighs> well, first off, it isn't one that I, uh, that I gave myself. Uh, I, share, uh, I share an office with a bunch of hooligans. And we send each other funny stuff from time to time, and a lot of those involve quizzes. Uh, what would you be in a horror movie? Or if you were a historical figure, who would you be if you were going to live in another time period? Whatever. And the one that I got is, what would your uh, country bumpkin name be? And uh, there's at the time, there's three or four people uh, in my office, and I finished the quiz, and I'm like, oh, mine's kind of dumb. I got Buck. And they just lost it. Like, they're just losing their minds laughing for 10 or 15 minutes. And they're like, you're a buck now. <laughs> and uh, somebody you guys have probably seen before, if you've watched our other Periscopes, is Chelsea. Um, she designed a logo that said Buck on it. And it was like, Buck the SEO Destroyer, Buck the SEO Slayer. And <sighs> that's been that's been me ever since. It's, it's not a thing that's caught on outside of PhotoBiz yet. Only time will tell, but yeah. So that's the that is the origin of of Buck the Destroyer or just Buck. Didn't they get you a mask as well? Uh, no, the the mask was mine. So the same hooligans in my office have uh, horse masks, and uh, one of them has a Burger King mask of the king. You know the mm -hmm. um, the Burger King guy that doesn't talk, and so I wanted to get in on the fun, and I wanted to be original, and I found an actual Buck mask, which I didn't bring down here, but it's uh it's like an eight point Buck. I don't know. If you know, Buck is a male deer, so it's got the big antlers hanging out a little bit better than my hands there. But So, yeah. Thanks for everyone joining us. Uh, again, we're talking to Alex Cobb. He's our SEO expert here at PhotoBiz. And he just explained why he got the nickname Buck. Yeah. Um, just from a random quiz that he did online, what bumpkin name he would have. <laughs> and uh, let's talk about some other life events that have happened in your life recently. Tell us, uh, you just uh, got married, right? I uh, just got married in April to my lovely wife, Kristen. Um, yeah, been that's about six months now. Did anything unexpected happen that day? I, heard, I think <laughs> the weather was a problem. The weather was beautiful for literally the two or three weeks before and after. But on this day, apparently Mother Nature decided to send us a blustery chill. Because it was like, uh, it went from 70, 75 degrees and sunny, literally the three weeks before and the three weeks after and the day of our wedding. It was raining, it was storming, it was so cold. Um, but it was so, I mean, it was a lot of fun. The thing was, is that we had a partially outdoor, partially indoor venue. Ended up doing it all in the venue. It was a lot of fun. Got a lot of wrestling fans in my wedding party and things like that. So a lot of John Cena and Daniel Bryan chants, a lot of dancing, a lot of fun. Good time was, was definitely had by all. Well, uh, <laughs> Chelsea from upstairs says, well, isn't that ironic, don't you think? Oh, Alanis said, Thanks, Chelsea. <laughs> Chelsea also being the one with the creepy Burger King mask. Um, so let's talk about some things like, uh, what do you watch on TV right now? What do you make sure you never miss? Well, before it got canceled, I loved Hannibal. Uh, me and Jeremy, who's currently filming right now, had a had a love affair with the show Hannibal, and they, they just didn't pick it up, and I'm a little heartbroken over it. But other than that, uh, watch The Walking Dead pretty consistently. Love uh, Mr. Robot. Oh my gosh, you guys. Seriously, USA Network is not exactly known. No offense if anybody from USA Network is watching. Not that they would be. <laughs> but they're not known for quality programming, but Mr. Robot is so good. If you haven't watched it, you should totally watch it. Um... Uh, I like, uh, obviously, like the, uh, the you know, Breaking Bad, uh, Dexter. Uh, I like Justified a lot. I thought that Walter Goggins' character, Boyd Crowder, was one of the more complex villains of any TV show ever. So, big TV fan. Parks and Rec, big TV fan. Probably watch a little too much TV. Um, so, yeah. Are you watching uh, Better Call Saul? Oh, my gosh. I love Better Call Saul. Yes, absolutely. Um, just actually just caught up. I was watching it on time. And, uh, and lost that, and, and lost track of time, didn't DVR it, went through the move. My wife and I actually recently uh, moved into a new house, and we lost our DVR, so I had to buy them and just recently caught up with them on a trip that I took to Louisiana and watched three or four episodes while I was there. So I'm all caught up, and I'm ready for the second season. Great. That's awesome. Yeah. So outside of work, what do you like to do? Oh, man. Uh, well, first, I mean, the first thing that comes to mind, I'm a big dog lover. 
Uh, I got two dogs, Joe and Frodo. Uh, Joe is the smart one that listens when you call, listens when you sit, uh, or tell him to sit, and, and things like that. Frodo is adorable, but really dumb. Um, he's, he's the one where immediately when you reach down to pet him, he rolls over and he's like, pet me, give me treats! Also, that's our voice for him. Uh, <laughs> if, you, if you ever hear me talk about Frodo, he has a voice that sounds like this! Uh, that's more of a personal thing. I don't know why. I just kind of shared that with everybody. But yeah, love my dogs. Big TV fan. Love uh, love sports. Big sports fan. Uh, huge Panthers fan. Uh, keep pounding. Uh, what we're eight zero now for the first time in history, in franchise history. Uh, play basketball with a good group of guys about once a week and go to the gym a lot. So oh, and uh, I go to a lot of shows. Big big music fan. So I go to a lot of concerts and things like that. What basketball team do you like? Uh, well, for NCAA basketball, I'm a big uh, Tar Heels fan. Uh, as far as NBA, uh, I'm going to have to go with the Clippers and then my local boys, the Hornets. Uh, our own uh, John Craigsman is wondering if he could do the uh, first down Panther sound. I, I, I'm not going to do the first down <laughs> Panther sound. Um, uh, no, I'm not, I'm not going to. It's second by Chelsea from upstairs. <laughs> No, no, I'm not gonna do it. I almost did it. I'm not gonna do it. <laughs> these are these are the local hooligans that I was mentioning earlier that gave me the nickname Buck that are telling me to do the Panther sound. Not gonna do the Panther sound. Someone is wondering what your shirt says, so I'm gonna. It is Seventeenth Street Surf Shop. I was actually going. If I would have known that we were doing this, you are all up in my. Oh, sorry. You're all up in my, oh, my face head. right now. Um, <laughs> I was gonna wear my RKO out of nowhere shirt, which is. I don't know if anybody knows who Randy Orton is. He has a thing, the meme, RKO. I don't know where I was going to wear that shirt, but I didn't know we were doing this today. That would have really given him something to look at. So you watch uh, WD, WWE as well? I do. I've, I've just revealed something else about myself. I'm a huge closet WWE fan. It's so compelling. Yes, I know. I know. It's the dude version of, the, of your stories, of your soap operas, of what have you. But man, is it not good. It's compelling. It's gratuitous violence. Uh, it's a lot of sassiness, and I love it. That's awesome, man. Yeah. So, um... Da, 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 da. <laughs> Let's just do that. Oh, uh, so what kind of music? <laughs> I don't think that's, <laughs> that's English. Carrie's <laughs> <That's the> <laughs> <laughs> over here writing out questions that we're getting, and I'm pretty sure she just wrote Chinese characters on there or something. We, that we so, could read. so what kind of music are you listening to, or what are you into generally? Um, so I was always kind of against the grain growing up when it came to music tastes. Um, I went to kind of a rural high school where... Um, you know, hip hop and, and country were really popular and I kind of grew up in a, in a family where we listened to a lot of different types of music and things like that. And so um, as I got into college, I, I joined the college radio station that really shaped a lot of the music that I listened to. So I listened to a lot of independent bands, smaller label stuff. Um, I think if you look at the blog post, blog.photobiz.com, the most recent blog post, I think I mentioned Lord Huron. Um, I went and saw them recently in concert. There's a band called Say Hi and Telekinesis that I saw with my buddy Nathan very recently. They're really good. You should check them out. Um, and, yeah, just a lot of a lot of smaller stuff. Love going to see a local show. And, uh, yeah. That's cool, man. Yeah. So if you had to prefer going to the mountains or to the beach, which would you rather do? Um... You know, at this age, that, that question honestly changes every year. I think at this point in my life, I'm, I'm a big fisherman. Just got back from Louisiana about a month ago on a fishing trip, and I love fishing. Uh, I like the idea of surfing. I used to surf. I don't think I could get my big tail up on a surfboard anymore, um, but uh, I would have to say the beach right now probably. Uh, but then again, I mean, I love hiking, uh, trout fishing, fly fishing, stuff like that. So I uh, definitely have a lot of love for our, for our Blue Ridge Parkway, for our mountains in North Carolina. Speaking of going on trips, you told me about a trip one time where you and your father encountered a bear. You, you, pull, you, you getting me to pull out the bear story I want right you now? to pull out the bear story. You want the bear story right now. Um, I'm going to keep this short. I, I've been known to drag stories on um, for quite longer than they need to be. Let me take a sip of water yeah, before ahead. I get into this. So my this dad and I... Yeah. <laughs> Between three and five years ago, my dad and I took a trip to Alaska, and um, we rented a cabin, and we rented a car, and explored the southern part of the state. And one of the big things when you get off the plane, everybody warns you about is like, look, there are bears everywhere. If you don't have a guide, make sure you have either like a really big gun or bear spray, which is like pepper spray, but like 10 times stronger. 
And so we had a guide for fishing and, and what have you every single day that we went, and uh, except for the last day. Uh, the thing about Alaska that time of year, we went in August and it's, it's light throughout the entire day except for three hours and even those three hours it's not very dark. Um, and so we would get up at 2.30, 3 o'clock in the morning, go fishing, we'd be done by 7 or 8 in the morning with nothing else to do for the rest of the day. And on our last day before we went back up to, um, it wasn't Juneau, it was the capital, I can't think it's, um, I can't think of it off the Capital of Alaska. I think, well, anyway, <laughs> uh, Anchorage. Anchorage uh, yeah. Right before we went back to Anchorage and we were packing up our stuff, my dad was like, hey, you know, uh, there's one fish that we haven't caught, a red salmon. Um, and so he was like, let's grab our stuff. Let's go catch us a red salmon. So we load up our car. Um, we grab our waders and our fishing, fishing stuff and we head up to what's called the Russian river. Now I'm sure some of you might know about the Russian river cause it's on discovery channel all the time as like the most bears of any, uh, river in America or what have you. We didn't know that we were pretty dumb at the time. So we go to this national park, Russian river national park, park our car and, we start to walk, we got our backpacks, we got our waders and things like that. And we start to walk, uh, start to walk toward the river. And we're intercepted on the way to the river. It wasn't that far of a walk, it was less than 100 yards, but on the way there, there was a side trail. And these uh, two elderly gentlemen walked up, shooting the breeze. You could tell they'd been having a lot of fun and we get to talking to them. Me and my dad are pretty outgoing folks, as you can tell by the fact I'm pretty much talking to myself for <laughs> 30 minutes at a time here. but. Uh, Anyway, they start talking about just how many of these red salmon that they've caught, and um, we're like, well, you know, where'd you, where'd you get these at? And they're like, well, we can tell you're not from around here because we've got southern accents. It's pretty obvious. So they explain you, you take this trail. It's about two miles away, up a hill, down a hill, over a tree, and through a creek. And no, this isn't through grandmother's house we go. This is actually <laughs> kind of the directions that they gave us. And so it took us probably 30 or 45 minutes to get out there. We climb over this big tree. Uh, we go through this creek. And then it's this place where the river, there's there's a river and then there's a thin strip, strip of land. And then there's a pool. And sure enough, I mean, these fish are just flopping all over each other. They're everywhere. Um, it's nuts. It feels like you could literally walk on top of them if you wanted to. And so we set up shop. We put our waders on. We go out there and we're just catching the heck out of them. Well, the thing about it is, is this strip of land is about 50 to 75 yards long. And at the end of it, there's this humongous tree and you can't see around the tree at all. Well, this guy pulls up in like a kayak and he starts fishing along the opposite end of the bank. And he's, uh, you know, we're talking about our fishing trip. We're telling him where he's, where we're from or whatever. And then he stops and he's like, excuse me, gentlemen, there's a, there's a bear walking your way. And we're like, all right, buddy, we get it. You're trying to get our spot. We're catching more fish than you, you know, whatever. And he's like, no, really, there's a bear coming. We're like, you know, whatever. So we keep talking to him. Every 30 seconds or so, he keeps bringing up the bear that's coming. So finally, we decide to put on our backpack, put on our waders, you know, whatever, and start heading out. Um, right as I get my final strap on, I turn around and... <laughs> <laughs> like 20 yards away, there's like a 1,500 pound grizzly bear. I'm not exist between 1,000 and 1,500 pounds. I might be exaggerating a little bit, but when you see a hungry bear looking at you dead in the eye, you don't really have an opportunity to weigh how big that thing was. <laughs> so, that's, so my dad's to my left and the bear is over here and I'm like, uh, dad, what do we do? And I turn around and my dad is gone gone you know in the cartoons like when there's like the little puff of smoke like the little cloud where they're just they just dash <laughs> that's what my dad's done he's already like wading through the creek by himself just you know whatever so i take off running and the thing starts chasing after me but i dropped my fish that i had and so he stopped at the fish instead of coming after me so like i said it took us 30 or 45 minutes to get out there probably took us 10 minutes to get back we were uh we were sprinting at one point my dad tripped fell on his face he's a he's a big fella uh, I scooped up his stuff with one arm. I grabbed him by his waders, by his straps, picked him up, and I said, hey, you're taking the lead, chief. And uh, luckily, we didn't see any more bears until we got back to the car and immediately went to Anchorage and waited in the nice, safe, and warm airport. So. Cool, man. So, we got some final questions. We're going to do these hot seat rapid fire questions. Hot seat rapid fire questions, all right. 
<laughs> Thank you for the sound effect. Hey, can you do the panther sound effect too? <laughs> <laughs> that was beautiful. Okay, let's do uh, for all your... of our new viewers. <laughs> yeah, for all our new viewers, we're interviewing Alex Cobb, our SEO expert here at PhotoBiz, and we've been asking him all these questions. So let's just do some quick ones, real quick. So, what's your favorite cereal? Fav? Whoa. Um. Uh. Cinnamon Toast Crunch. Uh. Favorite season. Summer. Pen or pencil? Pen, pen all day. Favorite color? Blue or green. What were you for Halloween? Don't make faces at me. Uh, I was um, Walter White from Breaking Bad. Hot dogs or corn dogs? <laughs> hot dogs all day. Also, hot dogs are not sandwiches. <laughs> Board games or video games? Video games. Stripes or plaid? Plaid. City or country? Uh, probably country. Fries or onion rings? Fries. All right. right. Individually place ketchup on each one. Which is very, very interesting. <laughs> um, so let's just uh, see if there's any <coughs> questions out there for anyone. Um, if not, we'll uh, sign off soon. So go ahead. Fire if you got any. <laughs> well, we're just going to end this session. We're going to tell you you can read more about Alex if you go to our blog.photobiz.com and you can follow us here. Oh, someone asked the question Christmas trees or our. No, I think it's Christmas or Halloween. Uh, well, I love Christmas, however. I don't love that they start advertising for Christmas in like the middle of September. So, Christmas in December. There you go. Yeah. Someone asks, where's your favorite place to fish? Oh, uh, Alaska's was phenomenal. Uh, we went to, um, we, 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 like I said, we just got back from Louisiana, the southern tip of Louisiana, went uh, drum fishing there. But uh, I really love Oak Island. Uh, we go there most frequently, Oak Island, North Carolina. I uh, catch a lot of Spanish mackerel and flounder and things there every year. So. Great. Yeah. Is there any other questions? Well, again, we're going to sign off by saying go to blog.photobiz.com. You can read more about uh, Alex there. And you can keep in touch with us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at photobiz.com. And it uh, seems to be one last question. It seems to be music or television. Which do you prefer more? Uh, wow, that is a tough one. Can I say a tie? Because I couldn't live without either one. I guess if I had to pick, I'd say music. Well, there you go. Yeah. All right, everyone. Thanks for joining in. You can follow us here at Periscope at photobiz.com.